nice on, on Philip to get them to take a dry. Roy again chooses to anchor up in the shelter of an island to fish the static dry fly. Here, adult flies have been blown into the calm. His preparations are careful and unhurried. I can hear him. He's waiting for us. When in doubt, cut it out. One of the problems with a lot of these lines, if you not too far away from the eye, you get a kink in the line mm -hmm. just above it. And it's hard to straighten it sometimes. Sometimes you like a fly to sit halfway in the film. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is just rub mucilin onto the top of the fly. But it, the bottom of the fly then gets saturated eventually and sits in the film. Mm -hmm. And fish take it much more confidently than Dry fly fishing, the fish that are in the edge of the ripple are far easier to catch than the ones in the calf. Roy's technique is quite different when fishing the static dry fly. The rod tip is held high. This helps to ensure he gives the trout adequate time to turn down on the fly. Spotting a fish, he casts well to the right, anticipating its direction, and, in this case, successfully. I guess where he, which direction he was going. Yeah. That was a good guess anyway. Well, no, he was to rise twice. You, yeah. you know. It's when they just rise once that you, you're in trouble. Egg-laying females can appear on the water some considerable time after they've hatched. They wait in the shelter of trees and bushes for the ideal time, generally during a calming of conditions, before they venture out onto the lake to lay their eggs. In certain years, they offer a considerable extension to the duck fly season. They provide exceptional sport for the dry fly angler and offer the dapping enthusiasts their first opportunity of the season to catch fish on dapped grey dusters. Yet another exceptionally marked corrib trout. Colin Canard buzzer, again, representing an insect caught in the surface film. Um, size 14 or 12, lightweight, 
wet fly hook or dry fly hook, black tie and thread, and we're going to make a body out of black seal fur, but this time not ribbed. The idea is to have a, a very lightweight fly. quite simply the body. The next thing to go on is some deer hair, just a few fibres underneath the cul canard just to to keep the cul, cul de canard up, up in the water, although it's naturally buoyant anyway. It's just a few strands over the, the back of the body from the head like so. Just trim those off. The last thing to go on are some fibres of Col de Canard, just torn from the, the stalk. That just goes on top the deer hair. And at this stage just trim the fibers off. as well not to cut this material, just uh, pinch it too. And what you can do as an option is to put a sparse black hackle in front of that if you so wish. It's a very simple, naturally buoyant fly. can be very effective. Cast to rising fish. Roy sets out with Tom, a local guide and fly fishing enthusiast, to fish a more traditional form of wet fly fishing, drifting, loch style, over a duck fly hole. Each has a team of three flies. Tom chooses a Peter Ross on the point, an Emerger on the middle dropper, and a Blay and Black on the top dropper. Roy's choice is a duck fly pupa on the point, an Emerger on the middle dropper, and his favorite, Cull de Canard Dry, on the top. Their techniques differ considerably because of the differences in the type of fly patterns they're each fishing. Roy is concentrating on fishing his dropper patterns slowly, dibbling them through the surface film. Tom is fishing subsurface, moving his flies slightly quicker to induce a take. They've seen occasional fish rising, and expectation is running high. Probably what those fish are at. And we're really not geared up just at the moment to fish those dry flies. You need to have something sitting right on top. Um. There we are. Yeah. Um, I think so, yes. He rolled over that beautifully. Yes, he's on the top fly, the dryer. Seems to be able to run quite adequately anyway. Somewhere. Yes. I'm anxious to get this fish in shortly because we'll be running into a weed bed soon. Um, so I'll put I see emergers here on the water now as I as we're drifting along I see emergers coming off. This fish is boring down all the time. He's, he's a lovely yellow bellied fish. Again he, he rolled over the fly on the surface so 
can just get his nose up. Yes, he's, he's hooked right. No, he's not having any of that. He doesn't like the look of the nose. He's hooked right on the point of the mouth, which is often a difficult place to, to land a fish. Right in the... No. There we are. Lovely fish. Beautiful fish. The colours on him are oh, absolutely yeah. incredible. He's losing them now a little bit, but beautiful, beautiful colours. As April progresses, the first olives begin to appear, a sure indication that summer is around the corner. Join Paul and Roy in part two for some truly fascinating summer fishing as they tackle the wily corrib trout with olives and mayflies.